So, Alexandra Gertes, uh, thank you for being with L'Apéro today. Uh, it's, uh, we know each other for quite a long time, and I'm happy for you to be here. So let me just say a few words first. Uh, L'Apéro O'Clock. L'Apéro O'Clock is a weekly event where we talk uh, very casually, it's a casual discussion, uh, with local uh, gastronomy leaders and wine leaders here in the Bay Area. So we're going to learn about you today, Alexandra, what you do, where you're coming from, how you joined this industry, and what you are up to uh, those days with everything that's going on. Uh, so L'Apero O'Clock is every Thursday at 5 p.m. It's live on Facebook. We have as well a YouTube page, so you can still look at us later on, whenever you want. And I will make sure to put the link of our YouTube page after our interview. If you have any questions, you can write in the comments. We may not be able to answer those questions as we are doing in this live, but we'll make sure to answer them afterwards. So don't hesitate to write any comments. Things you like, you don't like, questions about the business and everything, please do so. That's what we're here for. Uh, one more thing about L'Apero, we have a website called lapero.org, L-A-P-E-R-O.org. We have a shop, we need to support, we sell hats, we sell a very funny uh, mask with a hole here for your straw. <laughs> you can drink and be protected. We have mariniere, we have a lot of things that can help us support. We have little badge like this that are funny, we have stickers like that, je peux pas, j'ai l'apéro. So you can help us, go on our webpage, lapro, lapero.org, there is no small spending, every spending is great, we need it, we need you, we need this. Alex, let's oui. talk about you. If you don't mind, I'm going to introduce you in, I will take three or four minutes for people who do not know you, okay. uh, at least if they have an idea of who you are, and then we go, and ask you a question. Is that okay with you? Yeah, that's fine. Thank you again <laughs> for having me. So, Alexandra Gertes, you are from Alsace. Mm -hmm. And people who go to your wine bar, they know about that because you have Flamenkuch in your wine bar. <laughs> they should. <laughs> <laughs> you did an MBA in 2000 at the Cage Business School, uh, International Business in France. You moved to the U.S. in 2001. You spent two years in New York, and then you moved to the West Coast, where you spent your last 17 years. So you've been in the U.S. for 19 years. Almost, yes. <laughs> Can you be <laughs> that? that crazy? Yeah, it is right? crazy, I know. Yeah. In 2019, you got a certified sommelier by the Court of Master Sommelier. So congratulations, it's not an easy one to, to have. Few of you have it in the city, by the way. Uh, and when you moved to the US in 2000, 2001, you started as a brand manager for, uh, you worked for two companies. One was called Touton and one was called Franklin Wine. You increased the wine sales in each of those companies. You trained the vendors, you trained the sales force. You were, you were in charge of the major accounts for all those companies. And then uh, after those four years of being a brand manager, you became an export manager for the Cave de Riboville. Riboville. Right, Riboville. Riboville, alors, yeah, but here there is no accent, but Riboville for the one who know. So the top, very top uh, sparkling wine, correct? Alsatian wines, all across uh, the board, like uh, still sparkling, uh, all of it. Very good. So you did that for four years. And then after those four years, you started uh, Etc. Wine Bars. The name of your company is called Ways and Wines, but people know you because of, under the name, of course, Etc. Wine Bar, which is your wine bar on, in Mission, uh, on Valencia, and your bar has been voted a couple of times as the best wine bar in San Francisco. You are managing over 10 employees at your wine bar. You are open seven days a week for the last eight years, and you spend a lot of time with charitable organizations to donate your time and your knowledge uh, to support your, uh, well, your local environment. 
you are a very dynamic, so sociable, social, sociable, sociable. Sociable, yeah. Sociable. <laughs> I think so, at least. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm saying it. <laughs> I'm like, for sure. You're very decided, you know what you want, and uh, you're very good to others. So I'm very happy to have you with us. Thank you. And uh, I'm going to start with the uh, questions. My number one, my, my first question to you is why is the US or how, why did you come to New York and how, how it happened? Uh, very simple, uh, as you mentioned before, I actually took a master in uh, international business and economics, import export business mostly. And so was looking forward like, you know, to be working on, uh, you know, in the US, because uh, I was already interested in like, uh, you know, working in the wine industry to start. And the US was at the time, on the brink of becoming the number one market for, uh, you know, export of wine, uh, of French wines. So it, it was just like it made sense to come to discover this market, um, to get to know it um, and, um, you know, build up also my not only my knowledge of the market, but of, you know, the, the English around it, uh, of the market industry here. And um, and so that's how I ended up like, you know, I started actually like working for uh, a couple of companies on the East Coast first uh, as a brand manager, as you mentioned. And then I ended up like coming to the West Coast to work for another company to further expand my knowledge of the US market to get to know both East Coast and West Coast. And then uh, long story short, uh, fell in love with San Francisco, like the song, uh, you know. And of course, I'm sorry, my cat is coming to visit. He's a little jealous of, uh, you know, the attention. <laughs> Hello, the cat. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, yeah, therefore, you know, um, fell in love with San Francisco, met a lot of people in the industry, uh, met some of my still best friends and so decided to um to stay here a little while longer did you know did you know you would be here for so long when you came in when you came to new york when you arrived here after two years say oh, okay i'm gonna go to san francisco no spend a couple no. of years or no never really planned on it i mean it just happened that you know from one job to the next and uh, one experience to the next and then you know of course uh, the the big question was uh, after a few years um you know, am I ready to have my own company? Because I mean, it's always been like, you know, maybe one of my one of my goals. And uh, therefore, like, you know, the question was like, uh, where, where should I set up my company? Should I actually go back to France and try to do it in Europe or in France or anywhere else? Or did I want to stay here? And it just made sense for me to do it here because I knew the market. I knew the market oh. better. I had been working here several years. Um, you know, and it was also like the opportunity for me to have wines from around the world, which I always wanted to offer, like, you know, a good selection from wines from around the world. And it's much easier here. There's only a few markets in, uh, you know, in the world, I'd say maybe some, some places in Asia, uh, London, uh, and of course, in the US, where you can have that many wines from around the world. Yeah. So you took that decision to start your business eight years after. I mean, you. it seemed that your first eight years in the U.S., you were brand manager or export manager for, for I mean, for French, for French product and specifically uh, yeah, Alsace yeah. product. Not just uh, French, but yeah, mostly, of course, French, uh, French wines. But I also like, you know, was selling like uh, at the time I was working for Franklin Wine and Spirits. I mean, I was also selling like you know wine from california from italy from all over the place got it okay so you are not selling only uh, wine from alsace you are not the no 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 you you were not the alsace specialist <laughs> no but i mean i did spend like a, a few years of course uh, working for this uh, alsatian winery so i do know my alsatian wines quite well of course and uh, you know i'm ready to answer any of your questions if you had any <laughs> <laughs> okay so 
when you came to San Francisco, you fell in love with the people of San Francisco. What's yeah. so special about this city? What did you make stay? I mean, you've been here for now, well, uh, how many, 17 years? Yeah, well, more or less. I mean, because I went back to Europe a few yeah. years and then came back, but yeah. Um, you know, the people, I mean, the, 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 the culture, uh, the spirit of San Francisco, very open-minded, uh, very versatile. Uh, you know, it's a, um, yeah, um, there are people from all around the world coming here, meeting here, mix, uh, mixing their energy and their culture. And, and this is, it makes this city, I think, you know, a very rich city in that sense, not just uh, wealthy, but also like rich in the sense of like uh, its culture and its diversity. And so what? Why wine? I mean, you always stayed with wine. You studied in wine. Yeah. Did you stay in wine because you started in wine, or did you really fell in love with it? What? Why? Well, why wine? You know, when uh, you are in a in a business school like I was, and uh, taking your master, uh, you know, and you know, no matter what you do uh, in life uh, professionally, I mean, you sort of always end up selling something, whether it's a service, it's a product, right? And so at the time, I mean, I had to make uh, a choice or like try to direct myself, you know, in an industry, whatever industry that was. And so, you know, there were mostly two things I really enjoyed in life. And, uh, you know, I was ready to work, uh, you know, in those industries. Uh, there was the motorcycle business and there oh, was yes. the wine business. That's right. Yeah. So those two passions of mine, I just, you know, I had to make a choice and, um, uh, and I just decided to go for wine because it was also going to allow me to, to travel more. And one of my goals was to travel. I always wanted to travel and the wine business was definitely, you know, going to help me like, you know, um, satisfy this, uh, this, uh, this desire and, uh, you know, to travel around the world, to, to visit wineries, to export the wine. So yeah, it just made sense. Um, you know, I always had a taste for it, and um, yeah, and I've never lost it. <laughs> but but you never found a way to have a business that can mix motorcycle and wine. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is kind of like uh, you know, can be a little like edgy, like you know, if you want to combine the, the two, like uh, you know, it's hard to recommend people to be drinking while they're they're riding. <laughs> Please. But it's good. At least you chose one one passion of yours. Yeah. You followed it. Yeah. And well, you've been very successful at it. So congratulations. I mean, you know, it's good. You. You're a good example for people to follow your passion. You know, a lot of people sometimes take job because it's yeah. a job. Well, you were brave enough to follow what you what you love. So that's good. I think it's important, and, and it, it, if it is something that I can say to anyone, like you know, looking for you know, an idea of like what they would like to be doing and what industry they want to be working in. I, I believe that, you know, when you have a passion or you love what you're doing, I mean, it's going to be so much, uh, you know, m so much easier for you to wake up every morning and to go to work. And needless to say that, hey, work is like half of life. <laughs> it's half of our lives, really. I mean, it's how many years? I mean, how much time do you uh, are you going to spend like, you know, working? Uh, so I think it is important that, you know, you like, you enjoy what you're doing. Yeah. So let's talk about Etc. Wine Bar right. and, you know, which is, uh, which has been really your main focus for the last nine years. Uh, could you tell us the concept of uh, Etc. Wine Bar? Why, why did you start this business? What what is different about this wine bar? Why is it so why is it so successful? All right. Okay, so <laughs> trying to make it short. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's a lot of uh, a lot of information, but I'll try to summarize, uh, of course. Um, well, the concept uh, pretty pretty simple was a uh, mixing uh, two of my hobbies. I mean, passion of wine, but also of traveling traveling around the world. Um, you know, previously I'd been an export manager for that reason, because uh, I wanted to travel the world. And uh, now I was going to stay in one place, that is San Francisco, but I wanted the, the world to come to me. <laughs> and that is like, of course, by, you know, bringing wines from around the world. So 
the concept, and it is actually written in golden letters on mm -hmm. our owning in the front of etc., is traveling around the world of wines. And so that's always been uh, the concept in the background. And this is also the reason why you have a map of the world on the, right here. the city, look, exactly. On the if city you look, guys, right. on top of me. Exactly, right above you, right above yeah. you. And the uh, same as, uh, you know, for the, the, the logo, also I designed the logo that, uh, you know, showed the world, it's, uh, it's round and it's got the compass for like the, the travel experience, yeah. right? And so the name itself, uh, of course, is also related to that idea in the sense that, you know, I wanted to represent wines from everywhere. So not just one type of wine, uh, you know, either from California or from France, you know, I wanted it to be global. And, um, and also, I think it's like wine is more than just a, a product. I mean, obviously, it's also th something that gathers people. I mean, it's a it's also like uniting, you know, food, uh, art, it's an art of living. It's, um, you know, it's got so many things, uh, you know, it brings so many things together. So that's the reason why I called it wine, etc. Because yeah, I mean, it's not just about having a glass of wine, it's about sharing an experience. It's about mm. having food and wine pairing. It's about like enjoying a great moment, a moment of passion, eventually a moment of art, because it's also crafting, right? It's art crafting. Where, where, was there a lot of wine bar at the time when you opened in the city? At the time, and I did my, I, I did, uh, you know, my business plan and my, uh, my survey, like uh, I did my, my homework, I want to say my schoolwork uh, really well at the time. I had a really like, thorough business plan uh, and at the time there were about about 20 there were about 20 wine bars in the city more or less uh, depending on you know who you include like you know depending on their selection of wines but more or less like I would say 20 wine bar were like existing at the time and so I figured there was a, already a good number it was already a good number of, of, uh, of uh, you know of wine bars in the city but I figured there's always more room. I mean, uh, you know, wine was definitely uh, becoming uh, more trendy uh, year after year here in the US, uh, meaning that, you know, Americans um, were like, you know, more and more interested, uh, you know, in, in the not getting to know wines, uh, enjoying wines. And, um, and there were actually there was only one uh, wine bar in the mission at that time. Uh, that soon after I opened, uh, closed, they closed themselves. Um, and so, yeah, there was uh, literally almost no wine bar in the area in the mission that was about to become the hotspot, like, you know, uh, a few years later. It was going to, it was definitely going to become like, you know, a hot destination for people to go out. And I, and I, I had a sense of it. I, I sensed that, you know, this is, this is it. This is the place. It is the time. Uh, there's definitely a need for it. There's a niche for it, and so that's that's how it happened. That's right, because the mission mission district uh, in the yeah before uh, yeah two thousand on yeah on ten uh, early two thousand and five it was not a fancy uh, it was it was a place to go party yeah. for the party goers. But yeah, it the, was, yeah, but only for like. A, yeah, the late uh, party goers, like uh, like we were. <laughs> 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 like, uh, do you have any memories? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, there was the Baobab, right? Uh, ah, there was the yeah. Bruno's bar. There were only a few yeah, places in the mission, really, that we were going, we were going to go, really. Everything else, I mean, Valencia Street itself was only like a few, there were only a few taquerias. That's all there was. There was only a few taquerias, some garage, like you know, uh, like uh, car shops, but nothing, nothing like like it is today. So, wh why do you think your business has been around for so long? You know, because we see we see restaurants, we see right. bars in the city working out very well for two, three, and four, and going. five years, and then it's like gone. I mean, the, the rotation is crazy here in the city. How were you able 
I mean, to be, I mean, you're, you're already at nine years with a uh, et cetera wine bar. How, yeah. how are you able to maintain your business to still be, still be here and still be doing very good? Well, I think uh, a lot has to do with like hard working. <laughs> Definitely hard working um, and uh, the concept uh, that we mentioned, I mean, uh, having a strong concept, uh, a concept, an identity. And I think, you know, if there is one thing that maybe uh, I succeeded with this business is to give an identity to the business. I mean, color wise, uh, the decor, it's warm, uh, it's got a European feel, you know, this is what everybody tells me, you know, all of my customers. And, you know, when you come in, and I always wanted it to be, I always wanted this business to be warm, uh, cozy, uh, not snobby in, in any way, you know, because uh, wine places, wine bars can sometimes, you know, um, feel a little intimidating to people, like, you know, when you don't know much about wine, and, you know, and a lot of places, yeah, people might not feel like so comfortable to come in. Uh, I always wanted, et cetera, to be first and foremost, a place where people are having a good time because that's what it's all about. And, um, and when you offer a strong concept behind it with like, you know, like I said, the culture and a good like, uh, you know, food menu that pairs well with the wine, uh, a good wine selection all across the board with some, uh, you know, um, some features such as like wine flights, uh, this and that, and again with a, a warm atmosphere, um, and it's consistent. You know, it's consistent mm. in the, in the, not only in the choice of colors of decor, but in the, in the selection. Yeah, the wine selection and, and so on. I, if if I may say something, I think Alex, you are very consistent. I think because you are always, or almost always at your business. Your I mean, when we go to your bar, we usually see user. It's very unusual when you're not at uh, at your bar and your team as well. Your team has been with you for a long time. Yeah. They stick with you. So you're able to be consistent because you're there. You know, like I was I was talking last week with Stephen uh, from Le Contour in San Rafael. Well, he's there with his wife, yeah. you know, the whole time. Uh, you know, Germain, he's there as well. You guys are successful, I think, because I was talking to Roland Passo. Well, Roland, when he was at La Folie, most likely he will be there, you know? Yeah. And I think that's a yeah. big part of your success, too, is that you, you are involved in your business. People will see you at the bar. Yes. Everybody? I agree. Yeah. Right? I agree. And there's one, one other thing that I would like to, you just mentioned, and I want to emphasize, uh, you know, um, highlight what you just said about the staff. I've had uh, the same staff, uh, at least uh, a few of them have been with me like for almost the nine years, uh, you know, that uh, etc. has existed. And that's a sign that, you know, I think that when you, you know how to surround yourself with the right people, whatever business you're in, I mean, whatever business you, 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 you set up, yeah. I mean, I think the key of success is like having also the right people around you because you're not always like you cannot be always there and, and addressing all the issues and all the problems and everything around the business, obviously. So you need to have a strong team. And I feel like, you know, um, I've been successful and like you know, having a good set of people around me and who represent also the vision of the company. Who, who yeah, that's right. Is Pierre still working with you? Who's that? Pierre? Yeah. Pierre uh, has been going back to France, as oh. you may know, like, uh, you know, um, yeah, he's, he's like, he's been like going back to France to help uh, his brothers actually business there. So, okay. but he's been back, you know, here and there, like when he comes back to San Francisco, he, he's always going to come visit and uh, eventually pick up a shift here and there, of course, uh, you know, no. it's like, uh, he's, is home to. <laughs> yes, guys, when you come to etc. Wine Bar, you will see Alex, but if you don't see Alex, her staff is amazing. Her staff is very cool. They, they take their time, they explain you what it is. They're very friendly, very casual. They make you feel like a big part of the family, so you should, you should try it out. Uh, Alex, uh, who does choose the wine? Do you choose, do you pick all the wines? How do you pick wine on who choose the wine? 
Okay, so I'm, yeah, I do the wine program uh, from A to Z, really. Um, so, yeah, choosing the wines, I mean, um, you know, I kind of, like, feel like, you know, what we need to have uh, in terms of, like, you know, wh what is, um, let's say, sometimes in fashion, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, they are some you know, fashionable wines that you want to have, of course, because everybody's looking for that. But also, like, you know, I want to have a, a good set of, like, wines from each country, each region. So I know more or less, like, what I need to bring in and, uh, you know, and, the, the you know, the exciting producers, exciting wines. Sometimes, you know, even, like, wines that, you know, that are not famous. I mean, I love bringing wines from, like, you know, Eastern European countries, for instance. Uh, you know, from from places no one no one knows about. No one knows that you know this country is producing wine, and all of a sudden they find it on your wine list, and they are like, "Wow, wow, how is that? Can I can I try it?" And I think there's nothing more exciting than to bring like new stuff like this, and it's it's exciting for me. It's exciting for my customers. Could you tell us about your kitchen and your live show? So uh, the kitchen, uh, it's pretty simple. I wanted a menu to, the menu to be good, uh, you know, s uh, simple in the sense, you know, it's, it's fast, it's not expensive, it's shareable. We have those flatbread, the flaming kush you just mentioned that comes from my region. It's a sort of flatbread, like, you know, typical from Alsace, uh, easy to share. We have also, of course, like the cheese and charcuterie plates, very popular. And uh, tapas, tapas as well, uh, that are very popular. People love that. Uh, again, it's it's simple. It's uh, not too expensive, easy to share, and everything. And I'm proud to I'm proud to say that everything is like good. It's organic. We try to work as much as possible also with local producers, like uh, you know. And that's for the that's for the wine. As for the um, events, like uh, live music, uh, for years now we've been offering live music two or three times a, a week. Uh, at this point, of course, with COVID-19, we had to stop, obviously, but I just, um, I just I'm, I'm happy to say that since last Sunday, we've actually resumed our Sunday uh, live music uh, with a band called Radio Sofia. They've been playing at uh, Etc. Wine Bar for like over five years now, and they're just an amazing jazz band. Every, everybody loves that, this band. And uh, so I invite you, if you don't know them yet, I invite you to come on Sundays. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, I mean, that, that makes your bar very, I mean, special. I think because I know that I've seen a lot of bands, different bands in your bar, and it's always very cool. It's always very nice. It puts a, good, good, a great atmosphere. So on top of very good wines, the price is right. You get, you get, you get an experience of sharing a, 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 a live there. Uh, COVID-19 happened, your business was closed for quite a while, now you are reopened uh, outdoor, yes. and uh, so you have tables outside, people can come and enjoy your, uh, your bar outside, yes. what about the inside, do you know when that's going to be? It's supposed to be, at this point, I mean, the deadline is, um, uh, is the July 13th. So that's when uh, we're supposed to be able to open uh, indoors as well for indoor dining. Um, so it's just to uh, say, just talk about like COVID-19 and what I've been doing for like uh, the last uh, three months really, mm -hmm. since uh, the closure back in March. Um, I did not wait actually, um, as soon as we knew, uh, we had the authorization from the city to actually sell retail i decided to uh to jump on that and i've set up um, a wine shop inside etc as uh, you can see like on the picture behind you it actually shows the wine shop the way it is right now those days um i've created um an online offer so you know if you go on the website of etc you will have a link to uh you know uh, business, I mean, online um, ordering uh, portal. So you can uh, you can order online uh, for pickup, for delivery, uh, both wine and food, of course. And so I've created in um, in this uh, on this website. Uh, not only do you have all the wine list, I mean, all of the wines available, but also I created like some uh, interesting, uh, you know, daily offers, packages, 
flights, uh, you know, like packages of wines, uh, special packages. And uh, we've been quite successful. I mean, it's been, you know, um, it's been really helping. It's been a challenge uh, to set it up, first of all. Uh, I've also set up, uh, you know, the um, Caviar, DoorDash, Grubhub, uh, you know, Courier that we're using right now for pickup and delivery. It is still available, of course, right now. We'll keep doing it. Uh, but yeah, I've set up all those things so we could stay alive. I wanted the brand of Etc. to still be there, to still be present, and to still be serving our neighborhood. And uh, the community actually uh, has, has been like uh, really grateful and very supportive all those months that we were closed for business. I mean, I could still, you know, uh, make the business uh, run in a way by uh, doing the wine retail. And uh, now we, we've been opening, like uh, we've been open for uh, outdoor seating now for the last uh, yeah, couple of weeks since uh, we got the authorization. And I am glad to see that people are so supportive. Uh, we have so many, um, you know, every night we have a lot of people um, and it's, it's a pleasure. It's such a pleasure to see people coming and enjoying themselves again. When you say that you deliver, do you, do you deliver in San Francisco? Where do you deliver to? Well, uh, via uh, our own uh, website, uh, yes, uh, San Francisco area. Uh, and outside, I mean, you know, uh, via Caviar, of course, Grubhub. I've, I've actually set up on Caviar, especially uh, DoorDash as well, but especially on Caviar, uh, a, a good selection, not the whole selection of wine, but a, a good selection of wine and daily offers as well. I mean, so you, you'll you find also some packages and, and, and uh, a good selection of wine on, on those platforms as well. And could you tell us again where to find you? What is the name of your website? Website is pretty simple. It's www.etcetrawinebar.com. Etcetrawinebar.com. Etcetrawinebar.com. Exactly. Pretty simple. <laughs> All right, guys. So if you put that on Google, you're going to find it, etc. Wine bar that we show up. Uh, so this is really the best way. I mean, the best way for people to support you to come and say hi, have a glass of, have a glass. You're on, you're on Valencia and the cross street is? 19th Street. Valencia 19th. and 19th Street. So that's if you can come visit us. I mean, that'd be wonderful. We'd love to have you. If you cannot, you can also support the business via online, of course, ordering. Yes. And you know, you're lucky because where, where your bar is located, it's now it's bright and sunny. And where I am located, it's very foggy. <laughs> yes, yes, it's true. I mean, I'm lucky to be also in the mission where it is mostly sunny. So even on days like today, when it's kind of foggy and windy elsewhere, we're still kind of protected. We have a, a special microclimate in the mission. You're going to answer me quickly, but I have five questions for you. Your favorites, favorite drink, Favorite food, favorite restaurant, favorite place to go. So that's four things. Drink, food, restaurant, place to go. When you have friends and family, what do you, you know, you're going to get rich, but except you're going to get rich, what other favorite place do you have? Okay. Well, I mean, for the drink, it's pretty simple. Wine. <laughs> I mean, you know, and, and all kinds of wines. I mean, I just, uh, I just say good wine. Wherever mm -hmm. it comes, uh, whatever color. I love rosé. I love red. I love white. I love sparkling. I just want it to be good. <laughs> <laughs> um, then for food. Uh, okay. All right. So here's <laughs> it's a challenge for you guys. But <laughs> I have become vegan. Oh. I am vegan, uh, yeah, out of belief, uh, you know, I try to contribute, you know, to, uh, yeah. you know, the little help I can bring to this planet yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and for the future generations. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, so, I mean, my favorite um, food right now, I'd say like a wonderful, like uh, a tagine, like a vegetable tagine. I have a recipe that... Uh, you would fall uh, head over heels. <laughs> it's really delicious. So that that would be my favorite dish these days. Um, and as for like a uh, place to go, I mean, favorite restaurants. Oh, that's a good question. I'd say yeah. one of my favorite restaurants right now would be um, a place called uh, Basil Canteen. I'm sure oh, yeah. a lot of people know this place. Uh, I love Thai food. 
I love Thai food in general. I, I like their flavors, the spices, all of that. And ever since I went to Thailand, I've been a really like, you know, um, I've, I've developed, developed a taste for it. Um, and uh, pl places to go, well, I mean, as soon as they reopen, I can tell you that I'll be one of the first uh, people to go back to the cat club. Oh, wow. Nice. <laughs> 80s. Love dancing. I yeah. Love dancing. <laughs> they have their special 80s, special cue on night. They yeah, exactly. Mode. They have great uh, 80s music and it's, it's very low, you know, it's very low key. I love that. It's like, you know, it's not pretentious. It's, uh, yeah. And uh, another place, of course, I'd love to go back to uh, is uh, Burning Man. Is where? Burning Man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not this year, obviously, but oh, yeah. hopefully next year. Oh, yes, that's right. They had to cancel it this year. Yeah, yeah, well, it's okay. That would be another year. Alex, I think it is, uh, we've been talking for 40 minutes. Yeah, um, I think it's about time to let people go and enjoy their own wine. That's right. Is there anything you want to let to them know about or anything special? Well, I want to just uh, mention the fact that I'm working on um, on top of like, you know, the offers we are we are doing online and, uh, you know, at the shop as a retail. I'm also working on like um, setting up a wine club so people oh. will be able to subscribe to be a member and receive like special offers like, you know, on a regular basis. And so, yeah, I invite you to come and check with us. Uh, you know, I'm working on it. It will be. Uh, you know, available online also within like, a, you know, probably two or three weeks. And apart from that, I want to thank the Apero, of course, for, you know, your support this whole time. Um, you know, uh, it's a wonderful, uh, it's a wonderful gathering of people you have here. And so, yeah, thank you for doing what you're doing. It's, it's, it's been great to be working with you guys on the few times that uh, I've had you at the wine bar and also like doing the, this live and, other times you've come to visit well uh, we're happy to support you in whatever ways we can if you have questions if you're trying to reach out to alex you can always leave comments i will look at the comment and answer to those comments so make sure to let us know what you think about our discussion if you have more questions we will we will answer them uh alex thank you for your time i know it's uh, thursday and thursday is a busy night for you your bar is probably already packed uh, they may need you there. <laughs> 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 but, no. uh, it's okay. I'm enjoying my wine too. Is it? <laughs> yeah. no. And well, like, guys, uh, l'apéro o'clock. Uh, next week, we're going to have someone who is, a, who is, who is, I would say, who has an unusual profile. He's a professor. He's a teacher at uh, University of San Francisco. He's an executive, executive chef instructor because USF, they have a hospitality management program. Uh, he cooked at the White House for uh, Clinton in the past. He worked in pretty famous restaurants, not to say very famous restaurants on the East Coast. And he's been a teacher here in San Francisco for quite a few years now. Uh, so he changed path going from the food industry, working in restaurant to being a teacher. So it's gonna be an interesting conversation that we don't have too many of those profiles here. So come in next week. Next week, it's same thing, Thursday, 5 p.m. on Facebook. You can see, you can look at this conversation on our YouTube page as well, on our Lapero YouTube page. And uh, we're looking forward to see you again soon. Thank you again, Alexandra. Uh, I, see to, I see you soon. And well, uh, guys, santé. Have santé, a good day, everyone. Thank you. A finished month. Have a wonderful evening and see you soon at etc. Bye bye bye. Salut. Yeah, and people go to one etc. Try it. It's fantastic. You're gonna go. You're gonna love it. And Alex will be there. <laughs> bye bye Alex. Bye bye. Salut.